Limbo is a very vague game with a lot of hints to things that may or may not mean anything and very little actual story or events to go off of when interpreting what happens in it, as well as what it all means in terms of symbolism. Because of this, I'll be spoiling the ending of the game, even though it's very possible and even likely that you can play this game from beginning to end and gain basically no new insight into the characters or what happens to them. Let's begin. Back in November of last year, a guy I look up to by the name of Jordan Underneath here on YouTube made a video on Silent Hill 2 and how he likes to play that game when he feels depressed. As if the game is his sadness and shares a mental connection with him. It's an absolutely brilliant and beautiful video and you should definitely go watch it. However, it got me thinking a little bit. Do I have a depression game? One that I feel I share such a connection with and one that similarly helps me when I'm feeling down? At first, I thought it was Mega Man 2, a game I've finished literally hundreds of times and know like the back of my hand, but if there's one emotion I don't sense when playing Mega Man 2, it's sadness. It definitely feels good to plow through a moderately difficult game with ease and know every secret and trick, but that makes me feel more adept rather than comfortable. Thinking about the subject more and about games I feel like I share a history with and a connection with that also feel like they sort of know me in a way, I remembered Limbo. I played this game way back in 2010 when it first came out and was immediately enthralled. And ever since I played and completed it back then, it really stuck with me. I play through it at least once every year and I feel like I understand it more and more as the years pass and I grow older. I was encapsulated by its atmosphere, its images of gruesome death, and even its heavy physics. I played the demo first and seeing as how it ended here... I immediately bought it and played the rest. I finished it in a night or two and was left with an ending that taught me nothing, but I didn't feel ripped off. I felt a lot of things, but angry about where my money had gone was not one of them, thankfully. The story was insanely vague, but I knew that's what made it beautiful in a way. Ultimately, no matter how many story theories I've read online or how much research I've done on the development of the game, Limbo is very simple to me. The Steam Store page description for the game reads only, Uncertain of his sister's fate, a boy enters limbo. Now, a lot can be spun from this, and I think that's really the whole point. Whether left intentionally simple or intentionally vague, the game's word choice here and extreme brevity serve to both allow analysis and interpretation as well as encourage them. The game is all about figuring things out. It's a puzzle platformer with a vague story and distinct art design. Nothing particularly new, but its mechanics, puzzles, and world building are some of the absolute best games have to offer. At this point, we all know how ingenious the intro stage to Mega Man X is, as well as the whole game, but Mega Man X's design choices are more along the lines of learn every single basic mechanic in the first stage and bend the rules of what you now know once you explore and gather new items and abilities, which is awesome. This makes the player feel like they're growing with the character throughout the game, and it works beautifully. Limbo, however, takes a different approach. In Limbo, you learn new mechanics throughout the entire game. In fact, a big one, being gravity flipping switches, doesn't come in until the last few rooms before the ending. The game is constantly reminding you that while you always have something new to learn, you are entirely capable of attaining and applying the knowledge in a timely manner. The game puts boundaries in front of you, forces you to experiment, and then tests you on your knowledge. In this way, it's remarkably similar to older platformers like Mega Man and Mario, and it worked flawlessly then, it worked flawlessly in 2010, and it works flawlessly today with games like Shovel Knight that do it with enough care. So that's why I think Limbo is a well-designed video game, but why is it so special to me? Why does it feel like home to me? Why do I feel like it's my sadness manifested into a video game? Honestly, I'm not entirely sure. All I can really do is share my observations about the game and try and explain why I attach myself to certain aspects of it. So here we go. The story, as I mentioned, is very vague. However, there's a lot of constants throughout theories online that attempt to uncover the mysteries of it and its deeper meanings. Most people agree that both the boy you play as and the sister he's looking for are dead. Not a difficult conclusion to come to, really, given the word choice of a boy enters limbo, most people understand Limbo is supposed to be the void in between life and death, and if the sister is already there, and the boy is entering to find her, 
then one can assume they're both dead and awaiting either salvation or damnation. Here's what I think. And I've perused a lot of theories online and haven't found anything similar, so hopefully this won't be a big waste of your time if you're into this game. I think this game is not only about a boy attempting to accept the death of his sister, but also a man who went to extreme measures to cope with her death. See, a lot of people cite the fact that the environments in this game gradually shift from organic, natural areas to rough, mechanical, and more industrial places and buildings. And maybe this game's interpretation of death is that you revert back to being a child and live through the trials of your entire life in a more condensed manner. The boy is actually a grown man. As for how they died, this is where my thoughts get a little dark and a little more personal. Ultimately, like a lot of great stories left to interpretation, you can view this game and its events however you like, and I do think that's why it's so beautiful. However, I interpret it to mean that the man lost his sister in some non-specific way, because really, it doesn't matter, and committed suicide in an attempt to cope. Coping takes on a lot of different definitions for a lot of different people, but sometimes, people do take it to mean they need to follow suit to someone they've lost. They attempt to either end their pain and grief by ending their life, or possibly in this case, they attempt to literally go after the one they've lost. So, why do I think this? Well, there's a running theme in this game that I feel a lot of people have missed throughout their playthroughs. It starts with a giant spider that stalks you throughout the beginning third of the game and that you ultimately end up killing. But you don't just kill this spider. You do this. You take a living being, murder it, and then use its death to your advantage to proceed. And even though this thing was clearly trying to kill you, you, the player, feel remorse. And this happens quite a bit throughout the game. Take this little guy. This puzzle involves trying to lure this little creature into this large gear to get it spinning so you can flip a switch to make it rain and get water flowing to proceed. But what happens to this creature once it's in there? It obviously can't get out, and you can't go down and help it. It's left there, running, spinning, to die. And this one didn't even do anything to harm you, or even try anything to harm you. There's a whole lot of this in this game, including tearing more legs off bugs, using dead bodies to flip switches, things like that. But why? Why would this kid be so content killing things to find his sister? because he was desperate enough to not only end his own life, but to end the lives of other beings as well in order to find his sister. And I understand that killing bad guys in a game that are trying to kill you too is commonplace, but this is supposedly a child, and a lot of these creatures are innocent. The boy and his sister do eventually find each other in the end out of absolutely nowhere, and it's thought that the last screen also being the credits screen but with no children and two supposed dead bodies meant that the children both made it out of limbo one way or another. Maybe them finding each other was what they both needed to accept each other's fate. Maybe him finding her in the end was just an illusion like the one that happens earlier in the game. Maybe the journey ends right where it started. The boy using his own death as well as the deaths of other things and people in order to find his sister is a dark subject. It's something that makes my skin crawl when I think about it, but it also sounds entirely like something I would write myself. I've made a lot of dark art and written a lot of dark stories in my day, and the idea that death can mean so much and so little to one person at the same time, like in Limbo, is very interesting to me. It says a lot about loss and grief and coping, and what I take away from it in the end is that there is no actual end when it comes to life or death. There's only Limbo the cycle, 
death begets death, and loss begets loss. And while this isn't something I necessarily agree with when it comes to actual death and loss, it's a very interesting concept and a very interesting look into the way death affects us and how we go about fighting or using it. Limbo is exactly the kind of game I would make if I had the tools and knowledge. Limbo is a game that I needed to play in 2010, and a game that I need to play now and for the rest of my life. I've lost friends and family members, just like all of us have, but to me, the game offers a stark reminder of how dangerous letting grief take over a person can really be.